Hi and welcome to Kim's Haven. My name is Rhoda. I'm so glad you could join in today. And uh, with me on set, I have a very special guest that I would like us to meet. And so I'll let her introduce herself and tell us what she does. Here you go. Hi, viewers. Thank you so much, uh, Kim Seven, Rhoda, for having me yeah. on set today. It is an absolute uh, privilege and an honor to be here. Yeah. I am a staunch follower of your channel. It is amazing the type of content that you do. Thank I you. must say, I must give you your flowers. Thank now. you. Thank now, you. <laughs> uh, your content is uplifting indeed, um, especially um, in a world that we live in today. Um, my name is Anna, migrant doctor mom. Uh, I am, uh, what am I? Gosh, <laughs> uh, it's difficult to always. You have uh, many hats. Yeah, isn't this it? is a difficult question that I always get asked, and sometimes I don't know how to package it. But really, I'm I'm just your natural girl. I am a mom. I'm a doctor. I am a wife. I am many things, but above everything else, I'm a child of God. Yes. Oh, thank you, Anna, for yeah. coming on set. Thank you. And it's such a privilege to host you today. Mm -hmm. I started following you for a long time. Yes. <laughs> and I enjoy what you do because you do it with a lot of passion and a thank lot you. of love. And mm -hmm. so I'd like us to just uh, maybe look back and um, if we can reflect. I like to reflect mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. and just reflect uh, your journey. Um, mm -hmm growing up and i know that's what has impacted you to do what mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. that what are the things that you picked up growing up that are have made you for example choose your career the career that you choose mm -hmm. as you said you're a doctor and you mm -hmm. do an amazing work mm -hmm. and so if you can reflect back and tell us um what are some of the things that influenced you to become a doctor okay thank you i was born and raised by uh, very strong parents, my mom, very strong woman, my dad, the disciplinarian of the home. And growing up as the last child, um, the last of 11 was uh, was an experience. I must say I was pampered, I was loved. I wasn't disciplined as much as my siblings. So obviously, uh, <laughs> you know how it, how it is. Yeah. But um, I must say my love for medicine uh, stemmed from the fact that um, the, I saw a lot of, you know, people, a lot of illnesses in the family as I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But the one that really touched me is when I had um, a car accident when I was, I think, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was all injured and all that. And um, they took really good care of me. And I remember in hospital, I told my mom, I mm -hmm. think I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, um, the... Being a doctor for me, and like I always say on my channel, it's, it's a big privilege because you get an opportunity to be with people at the lowest of their moments, mm. at the happiest of their moments when mm. kids come in, but also at the end of life where mm. people are extremely vulnerable. And mm. it is ac actually uh, something that I always say, if you don't have the heart to do it, mm. do not do it. Mm. Because remember, it takes a bit from you, but mm. there is so much that you get to give. And mm. that's the honor that I got. Mm. And I think being raised up in, in, in an environment where I saw suffering, but at the mm. same time, I saw a lot of love and I saw a lot of people looking after each other. You know how we are brought up in Africa. Yes. Mm. You know, you, you, you grow your neighbors are, are your siblings, mm. you know, next door neighbors are your aunties and all. Mm. So looking and learning how to care for our, 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 our neighbors, learning to care for our siblings mm. and siblings by that, I mean like our community siblings mm -hmm. yeah. was one of the things that yeah. uh you know instilled in me those virtues of patience those mm -hmm. virtues of love empathy mm -hmm. and all that and i think that's probably what has been at the center of my career mm -hmm. that spirit of loving and giving to the best of my ability oh thank you so mm -hmm. much anna mm -hmm. that's amazing to hear and mm -hmm. you know sometimes we encounter experiences that are negative mm -hmm. and um to see that you took a negative experience mm. from the car accident to um, turn it into an, a positive experience in life, that is really amazing to hear. And I'm mm. very sorry for that. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just amazing to see how you've turned that experience around. And now mm. many people mm. across the world, because I know you have practiced in mm. two different yeah. uh, continents, mm -hmm. and to see that they have experienced yeah. um, 
that yeah. kind of care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's um it's a challenge also to us that we if we encounter anything that is negative, just have a way of looking at it and seeing what positive um points I can pick from this, what positive thing I can take from this and um use it to the benefit of others or sometimes to even ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So t- um <laughs> Did you experience any challenges on your journey to become a doctor or was th- it easy? I think if I say I didn't experience challenges, yeah. I'll be lying for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, the training, my medical training obviously mm. took took six years and then obviously internship mm. and all that. And um, uh, I mean, training in, in, in where I trained, I trained in Kenya. Yeah. So, um, you know, there were classes to go mm. to. There was financial implications to think mm. about. Mm. I was raising a very young family at that point in time because, mm. you know, I started, you know, um, at that point I had a very young child starting school. Mm. And, of course, as a, you know, as a mom that is mm. in school mm. and with all its own challenges of illnesses in the mm. family, of trying to get finances and mm. And I'm never shy to to say uh, to talk about my background because it is what has made me to be today. Mm. And some of those challenges I, I have shared on my YouTube video. So if your viewers can 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 have a little look, yes. some of those things I talk about my back. You know, your background doesn't have to define who you are. It does. Mm. It does have an effect, but it doesn't have to define exactly who you turn out to be. Mm. So some of the challenges, like I've elicited, uh, would be like the financial implications. Mm. You know, trying to apply for help and sponsorship Mm. which I was lucky enough to get Mm. and then obviously illnesses in the family Mm. Um, sometimes of course the the studying was extremely extremely you know full on Mm. because so much content to cover but uh, I must say in everything if you're resilient and if you are uh, consistent in what you do at the end of the day you'll turn out on the other side successful Mm. good resilience carried the the day it did, it did. resilience and consistency, <laughs> and consistency in everything that you do yeah. mm-hmm. oh that's nice yeah. you mentioned about raising a young family and now and i know you um two adult daughters and not adult two older one daughters adult. there's one <laughs> adult and one teenager isn't it how yeah. did you marry how did you integrate family and uh, study and also working because after that like after yeah. the six years, yeah. you went mm. straight into the workforce mm. and it's very busy in yeah. Kenya. I yeah. know yeah. as a doctor, it's very busy working the public <coughs> system. Mm. How did you na- navigate that space? I think when I was going through it, it was just natural. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was just what I had to do. I yeah. guess if you put in a space, yeah. you either have to swim out or you have to jump through yeah. the window. You have to find yeah. an opening, I must say. But I think yeah. for me, yeah. um, having strong support you know i must say the support from my spouse and the support from my family was the key Mm. and i i will not lie looking back in retrospect if you were to tell me to do that today i'm not too Mm. sure how things would be Mm. but i must say it was not easy Mm. it wasn't easy because obviously um uh, with medicine and the intensive, uh, ex, you know, the, the amount of work that you have to cover in content. Mm. And then at the same time, you have to come home and mm. look after your child mm. and um, and um, look after your family as mm. well. It was quite hard. Mm. But I think, uh, like I already said, strong family support. And I feel, and I always say, that's one thing that sometimes I miss being this part of the world, you know, the support that you can count on Mm. from the rest of the family, apart from your nuclear family. And then I think going into the workspace, I was quite lucky because I, where I trained is where I did internship and it's where I started working. So the fact that I knew my way around, Mm. I knew the system, I knew who would, you know, you know the way in a workspace, you have to know who's going to break you or who's (laughs) going to... Who's gonna mend you? Yeah. I knew who's who. I yeah. knew how to target and uh, uh, position myself really mm. well. And I must say, I was quite successful and quite um, quite lucky. Even getting my job, yeah, it's a you blessing, know, isn't even it? no getting my job, I believe was just a miracle in itself. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. Too. Mm. Yeah. So 
you navigated that season and you are mm. somehow out of it, almost mm. out of that season. Mm. But um, what has been the highlights of your career? I think, I think I've had quite a lot of things that I must say, but I think in general, mm. my highlight is the small things when a mm. patient comes back and says, thank you. Mm. You know, when you do what you have to do, it must start like even just in Kenya, like, you know, mm. people would come in with trauma, significant mm. trauma. Mm. And, you know, with the challenges of the system, you know, you know, maybe it's at night, there's no theater space, there's no this, there's mm. no this. The ability to single handedly or, you know, with some of the support from your colleagues, putting in a chest tube, you know, mm. um, you know, doing a suprapubic and relieving mm. that poor old man's, mm. you know, distended pain. bladder and mm. pain. That for me has always been my motivator. Mm. That for me, you know, the joy that comes with mm. somebody going home, you know, feeling mm. much, much relieved. Mm. And, and a lot of times, you know, our patients, you know, even here, you know, they can't give you too much. But mm. I think that honest thank you from the heart, mm. that for me has always been my highlight back in Kenya and here. Mm. And that just reminds me, just the other day I had a very, very sick patient, mm. extremely sick, just suddenly overnight became mm. extremely, extremely sick. And obviously I was looking after him mm. and poor, poor guy was, I almost thought he was going to die on me that mm. night. And I must say the joy for me was mm. regardless of that man being so sick, he mm. took out a book, mm. he tried to sign it off. Oh. He's decent a book and yeah. he wanted to oh, give to me the book. And he wanted not only to give it to me but for the service that I'd rendered, but as a yeah. sign of thank you for what oh, I'd done. Just that amazing. in itself just yeah. brings me so much joy yeah. and actually tells me that yeah. um, what I am doing is not only a job, but it is yeah. ministry for me. Yeah. Yeah. I can attest to that, that mm. what you do is mm. ministry. You mm. do it with so much yeah. um, tenderness mm. and kindness, and you're a very good listener. Oh. And that is amazing okay. <laughs> to mm -hmm. have in a doctor. You know, here when we go to the GP, sometimes you just want to be listened to. Yeah. And when yeah. you feel rushed, yeah. it's like even That's though true. they give you the prescription, you feel like, oh, yeah. I didn't get the service. But yeah, yeah you are true. an amazing oh, Thank you. And we are grateful to have you. Mm -hmm. And so um, you said you trained in Kenya. You practiced there. Yes. And as we all know, we are not in Kenya today. So how did you end up in this part of the world? Oh. How did you end up in Australia? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my journey is, yeah. I always look back and I'm grateful for, for the gift of, you know, I call them destiny lifters. Yeah. Because for me, I knew I had my life lined up. You know the way, you know the, way the Bible says that you make your own plans, plans. but eventually, yeah. you know, God has a way of just aligning things differently. Yeah. My life was lined up. I knew I was, because at that point in time, I was about to start my ONG training. Mm -hmm. So I knew I would so do my... So what's ONG? Oh, obstet my sorry. <laughs> obstetrics and gynecology. I was, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was hoping to be Dr. Chani or mama. <laughs> <laughs> and I even had, you know, the admission letter yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, and so I knew I'll be the Tari or Mama and mm -hmm. then I would, um, you know, go into teaching and then yeah. I would be a lecturer oh, and amazing. an obstetrician gynecologist mm -hmm. at the same time. And then eventually I would go into fertility You'll make medicine. A good teacher, by the way. You know? <laughs> And then I said, I'll go into fertility and help yeah. women have babies. Those yeah. So I knew, I oh my God, I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. But then along the way, I always say, uh, a good friend of mine, shout out to Celia. Yeah. She came here and then she was like, Anna, you have to come. You have not yeah. seen it. Yeah, I'm taking you back a little bit because in fifth year, I had an exchange program where mm. I went to Canada mm. and I worked in obstetrics and gynae. And that's why my love for obstetrics and gynae mm. sort of sprouted from. Mm. But then I tried to look for ways of staying in Canada and I realized it was going to be a long haul for me. So obviously that dream had sort of, you know, gone the back, back seat. But then now here it's been revived. My friend keeps calling me, keeps texting me. And are you missing out? You need to be here. So then I decided, oh, talk to my husband. And they were like, okay, maybe let's give it a shot. Yeah. Because the main reason, obviously, I was looking at it, you know, um, you know, but I, you know, all those things that we traveled to Australia for. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously after that, then I, I, I decided to take the journey of, you know, getting accreditation, doing exams and traveling for the first time in Australia and, you know, and then everything else yeah. then continued from there yeah mm. oh, thank yeah. you Anna. Mm. thank you for sharing mm. that yeah. bit. and if you want to know more about that journey you check out her channel can yes. you shout out your channel my grand doctor <laughs> check out my grand doctor mom mm. and you will get all the juicy details yes. of her migration yes. and she really does an amazing job about Mm. how to migrate as a doctor what are the challenges how do you yeah. navigate the system and mm. how do you get to get into the workplace all that yeah. process and your registration process as yeah. well so check out Thank you. Uh, anna's mm. channel my grand mm. doctor man and you'll get all the details subscribe and show some love okay. yes yes yeah yes. so to sum it up i know we can talk a lot yes, and we uh, can. <laughs> <laughs> we can. Just to sum it up, um, having been in Kenya and now in Australia, and also as a doctor and as a mom, mm -hmm. because that's who you are and yeah. it's really what you bring out even when you're uh, sharing your life, what are two or three things mm -hmm. that you can tell a younger self, a younger person who's looking up to you um, what can you tell them looking back um, mm -hmm. that has made you be where you are? Okay. Just, yeah. I think yeah. the biggest for me, maybe I'll just divide it into two as, mm. as a mom, I think the biggest thing I can say is you just learn on the job. I mean, there's no, you can never be ready enough to be a mother. There's no mm -hmm. class where you'll qualify 100%. Now I am a good mother, 100%. <laughs> there will be days when you will really mess it up. Yeah. There are days when you wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. And I, like I always say, remember these children will grow. Yeah. There are seasons when there are small ones yeah. and stuff like that. There are the challenges that will come with that. Yeah. And then when they are teens and then when they are young adults yeah. and then when they are older. At some point, the marks that you see on the walls and you're complaining yeah. about, you're going to miss yeah. them. Yeah. So it's very important to just go with the steps of your children. Mm -hmm. Be available and present as much as you can because they grow. And before you realize it, they're old enough out of your laps and there's not too much you can do mm -hmm. and i must say obviously for me what has been important again and that i would encourage somebody is you know leaning on christ it's important to to trust god with your kids as well mm -hmm. as a professional i must say um and i always say it is an extreme extreme privilege to be a doctor mm -hmm. and do not take it lightly if you find that you know you're losing that empathy for your patients then mm -hmm. probably you need to reconsider something different mm -hmm. and i must say you especially i always talk to my imgs which is international medical graduates mm -hmm. remember when you come to australia the system is different mm -hmm. you will be under pressure and all that but remember one thing mm -hmm. you are a doctor in your own sense mm -hmm. you know do not let anybody look down upon you mm. thinking that you're less of a doctor. You mm. are a doctor in your own sense. Mm. Yes, you'll be learning the system. Yes, mm. you'll have your difficult days. Mm. Yes, the days that you look and you go like, why did I even come to this country? Mm. But at the end of the day, mm. fix your eye on the prize, which mm. is mm. to ensure that you're getting a good life for yourself mm. and for your family. Mm. And just keep doing, keep, keep at it because it will sort of, you know, get better with time. Mm. And the last person that I always talk about on my channel is a migrant. If you're a migrant out there mm. and you are, you know, starting life in Australia and it is seeming very difficult, I want you to go back and look at my video that talks about settling in Australia and look at it really keenly. You will realize that those stages are there. You go through those stages, but eventually you're going to be successful. Mm. Yeah. So thank you so mm, much, Anna. Mm, that has mm. been wonderful. It's been you. an honor to host you here. I mm. I don't want to wrap up this conversation. Up but <laughs> I think we need to wrap up and uh, mm. maybe we'll continue this conversation yes, later. Thank you so if you much. enjoyed this conversation, mm. kind of like, share, subscribe, but don't forget to check out Anna's channel, Migrant Doctor Mom. There is some good stuff going thank on you. there. And uh, thank you so much for coming into Kim's Haven. Thank you I'm for very having me. honored. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best in thank your you so journey much. and in all. That you before do. you go i just want to let my your viewers know yeah. 
Yeah. That there's something coming up yeah. soon. Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, I don't know. There's something <laughs> coming up. I'll be talking about migrating to Australia with yeah. somebody who will, will go into detail. Yeah. So look out on my uh, socials, Migrant yeah. Doctor Mom, Instagram, yeah. Migrant Doctor Mom, mm. and YouTube. Um, I will share my link with you so that your viewers can check me out. That Thank you so much great. for having me. Wait for the it. link. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.